In this lesson, we will cover part two of the electric circuit syllabus. We will cover Ohm's law and resistors, which both form part of the physics syllabus. Now, a major part of this section of the syllabus is Ohm's law. You need to know, firstly, you need to be able to state Ohm's law um, correctly, and you need to be able to understand it and apply it in circumstances where they ask you to do so. So Ohm's law is, we state it as the current through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across the conductor at a constant temperature. Now that constant temperature is very important. As soon as we change our temperature, as we see just now, our, our resistors are affected and Ohm's law no longer applies. So we must always do this at a constant temperature. So the relationship for Ohm's law was investigated as follows. They had nichrome and they had eureka and they measured the voltage and the current. So as you can see, nichrome has a far greater gradient and our voltage over our current is our resistance. We know that R equals V over I and therefore the increased gradient shows that nichrome has a greater resistance and the decreased gradient of eureka shows that eureka has a decreased resistance. So as we've said, gradients is our change in V over change in I is our resistance. So R equals V over I. This is a formula which we will find on your formula sheet. R is your resistance and that will be measured in ohms. Um, your voltage is obviously measured in volts and your current is measured in amps. So at the same voltage, we see that Eureka wire produces more current. If we look at a voltage, um, so let's just take this point right over here. For this voltage, we are producing current down here for nichrome and we would produce current down here, which is far greater for Eureka. And we now know that Eureka has a lower resistance than nichrome simply by our gradient. When resistance is constant for all current, the slope is constant when the resistor is an ohmic conductor. So we see that for all currents, our gradient is constant and therefore these are ohmic conductors. If the slope is not constant, the resistance is not constant and the resistor is a non-ohmic conductor. Now, in certainly in the IEB syllabus, I only ever came across ohmic conductors. Um, they may ask you about non-ohmic conductors and just be able to explain that your resistance is not constant. Um, but further than that, I don't think you need to know much about non-ohmic conductors. So we need to know about heat and how heat affects our resistance. So high heat raises our resistance. Um, that's why we've said in Ohm's law that you have to be at a constant temperature because as soon as we change our temperature, our resistance changes. So as we increase our temperature, we increase the kinetic energy of the particles in our conductor. There's more randomness and more collisions and thus we increase our resistance. So there are more collisions causing a a, res a higher resistance path for the flow of charge and therefore we raise our resistance. Now if we look at non-ohmic conductors, so this would just, just for interest sake, you won't be tested on this, but we see that our resistance here is not constant and it is not constant here either. So this would be a neon tube, an increase in current brings a rapid decrease in resistance. So this would be non-ohmic because our resistance as we've said is not constant. A filament lamp, so as we increase our temperature, um, our resistance increases. So as we increase current, our temperature goes up and thus our resistance. So we see an increase in our resistance. Unlike over here, we have a decrease in resistance. Over here, we have an exponential increase. Now let's look at our factors affecting resistance. You will often be asked about this um, and you need to know how to explain it and why this would take place. So length, so if you have a longer wire, there's more resistance. Um, the easiest way to explain this is there's a further distance for your charge to flow and this raises your resistance of your path. When you look at your cross-sectional area, so a wider um, conductor decreases your resistance. There are more pathways for a flow of current. So we were always taught it using a road analogy. If you have a, la a one lane road, the traffic will obviously be slower than if you have a six lane road where cars are able to spread out and travel at their own speed. Um, then we look at temperature. So as we've said, increased temperature increases our kinetic energy of our particles. There's more randomness, more collisions, and this increases our resistance. 
So obviously for all of these, you need to know that obviously shorter length will decrease resistance. Um, a narrower conductor will increase your resistance and lower temperature will decrease your resistance. And then materials, so all your materials have different resistance. So it depends what conductor you use. Some conductors have greater resistance naturally and some have less resistance. Let's look at resistors in series and parallel. So resistance is a material's opposition to the flow of electric current and we measure it in the unit of ohms. As we said ohms law, we now give resistance a unit that we call ohm and it's represented by this um, symbol right over here. A conductor has a resistance of 1 ohm if the current is 1 ampere when a potential difference of 1 volt is applied. So that's simply from R equals V over I. We have a resistance of 1 ohm if we apply 1 um, volt and current of 1 ampere. So your symbol for your resistors when you're drawing your circuits, you can either draw it like this or you can draw it like this. You must remember that our voltage is determined by our battery or our source of power and charge will always take the path of least resistance. If you have a parallel circuit with one of your paths with six ohms and one with one ohms, your charge will always take the path of least resistance, meaning your path with one ohm. So let's look at resistors in series. So this would be a series circuit right up here. And you must remember that series is one current path. So as we can see, there's only one path for your current to flow and therefore it's series. So first point we need to know is current is the same through all resistors. So the current flowing through this resistor is equal to the current flowing through this resistor. Potential difference is divided across your resistors. So depending on your resistance in ohms, your potential difference will be divided across your resistors. And then lastly, your effective resistance, which is your so your total resistance of the whole circuit is equal to resistor 1 plus resistor 2. And however many resistors you have, you simply add them together and that is your total resistance in a series circuit. However, when you look at resistors in parallel, so you must know that a parallel circuit has more than one path for current to flow. As we see here, there's one path over here and another path over here, which indicates that this is parallel. So we need to know firstly that potential difference is the same across all resistors. So in series, our current was the same across all resistors. Now in parallel, our potential difference is equal across all resistors. In parallel circuits, your current is divided through resistors. So unlike in series where your potential difference is divided across resistors, now in parallel, your current is divided. And your effective resistance in a parallel circuit is now one over your total resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So you simply add all of your resistors with 1 over your resistance and then you invert your 1 over RT to get your total resistance. So let's just look at a quick example over here. If we have a series circuit with 6 volts and we've said that our voltage is divided across our resistors. So we have equal resistors, so it's divided in the same ratio. So it's three volts across this one and three volts across here. And now we work out our I total. So our I total will be equal to our total voltage over our total resistance. We're simply rearranging R equals V over I, and we get I to be three over two, which is 1.5 amps. Your V is equal to I times R, so V equals 3 over 2 times 2, and therefore V equals 3 volts. So that is, for each resistor, your voltage is 3 volts. When we look at parallel circuits, you have a, so obviously we know that there are more than what there's more than one path for the current to take. So as we see here, this is parallel, there's a path over here and a path over here. We know that our voltage across resistors is the same. However, our current through the resistors is different. So in order to work out our total resistance, we know that our total voltage is six from our battery. We know that our I, our current is, sorry, we're gonna work out our total resistance first. So one over RT equals one over one for our one ohm plus one over two for our two ohm resistor. And our resistance total therefore equals two over three. We then rearrange R equals V over I to solve for our I total and we get that I equals 9 amps. 
So therefore we know that there's six volts because we know that our voltage across resistors is the same in parallel. So it's six volts across each resistor. And we know that our amps across each res um, resistor, we work out using R equals V over I, and we work out that in this resistor over here, we have six amps. And in this resistor over here, we have three amps. And hopefully you guys have noticed that across the bridge, or the two different pods, if we add the current together, we get our total current, which is nine amps. And in series, if we add our voltage together, we get our total voltage, which is six volts.